Now, traditionally, when students are starting to do research at the library website, uh, they, the first thing they always tend to look at is the app search. Now, an interesting note about our app search is that it is very Google friendly in the sense that it does look like a Google page because we know that students use Google. We use Google. Google's a great resource. But you're going to get instructors that want you to have just peer review sources or scholarly sources. And I can tell you as a professional librarian who's been doing this for over 10 years, it is very difficult to, to know what is a professional resource when you're on the internet? It's very difficult to tell. Um, some of the tricks that we learned in library school is that if a site is .com or .net, it's not necessarily going to be an expert peer-reviewed source because, let's face it, anybody can create a .com or .net set, um, site. .org, .edu, those, .gov, these tend to be more um, expert-driven websites. These are, tend to be created by educational institutions or by government agencies, by organizations that have professionals within them, at least you hope. Uh, so there are, it's kind of a less of a crapshoot, so to speak, when you're looking for internet sources, when you look at the end of those HRL addresses and you kind of know that, well, Mike Smith's blog on auto mechanics and, and political science might be the most awesome blog you've ever read, but it's not necessarily going to be an expert peer-reviewed source if Mike Smith doesn't have a degree in political science and he hasn't written any scholarly articles in political science. So with that being said, plugging the library website, you know that when you use our databases, when you when you use the information that's available to you through our site, that, it, that you have the options for peer-reviewed and for scholarly. And for many of you, you have full-time jobs and families in addition to going back to school, so you really don't have the time to browse through the 53 million Google sites that you generally get when you do a search. However, there are ways of, of navigating Google to your advantage, and here's another plug, um, but we have amazing workshop that Megan Johnson does about Google searches and how to narrow those down. So if you were to go back to the upcoming workshops page, sign up for Megan's webinar. I highly recommend it because she is the queen of Google, and she has all kinds of tricks and trades that can help you to use it better. Now, with that being said, you notice that we do have a link to Google Scholar on App Search. Because again, we know you're using it, and Google Scholar is a great source. But the way that we've got it worked out is that if you were to use Google Scholar through the library website, as opposed to going to www.googlescholar.com, you're going to see something very interesting and very different. So um, let's see, I was an archaeology major way back in the day before I became a librarian. So say that I'm looking for archaeological articles. You'll see that it looks just like the regular Google Scholar, but you'll see on the right-hand side that you're going to see links to PDF, PDF by JSTOR. What we've done is we have literally linked all of our databases to Google Scholar. So, for instance, if you're doing the search and you decide that this is the absolute article you've got to have, you can click on the link and it will directly link you back to the library website if we have it. So if it's in one of our databases, if it's in one of our ebook collections, it will link directly to it. So you are in fact using the Belk Library site when you use Google Scholar on this site, but you also still have the Google friendly, um, uh, sorry, I can't think, the, the Google friendly page that we know and love and that we always use. So it does link you back to the library website. It can open things up for you. And two, if you are a diehard Google user, you have had this happen to you, I'm sure, on more than one occasion where you click on the perfect article or the perfect book and it doesn't offer it, we don't have it, or they want you to pay $45 for them to send you the PDF. Don't do that. If you come across something like that within your research, click on the interlibrary loan link, which is right here under find information. So if, if you guys are following along, please click on that link. If you are a first time user, click here to get an account because your, your app state credentials are not gonna work in this. So you're gonna have to create a separate account. But what you'll do is you'll just take a second, you'll fill out first time users, You'll uh, put in all of this information. I highly recommend that you just go ahead and use your um, App State username and password because that's one less username and password you have to remember. But don't forget, you do have to physically fill it out because it's not on automatic. And so you'll log in. And you're going to see... Um, 
all the different types of books that you've requested. So right now I'm on this big Julia Child French cooking kit. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just like I'm obsessed with it. So when you're going to put in a request, so say you're on Google and you found that article, but for whatever reason, it's not linking you to the article. We don't have it. They're asking you for money. Don't pay for it. Uh, put in as much information about that article as you can within this article request. And then you click submit. What's really cool about using Iliad here within the Belk Library is that you can actually see um, the history of your request, which is kind of cool. There's nothing more frustrating than putting in a request online, going off into the internet, and then you never really hear from them again, or you don't know where it is. What's cool about Iliad is that it shows you exactly what you requested, when you requested it, so you can literally follow along with where it is in the process. You know that it's been ordered, you know that the request has been sent, that it's in route, that it's been mailed to you if you're a DE student or it's waiting at the library services desk if you're an on-campus student, faculty or staff. Um, so you can literally follow the process here and you can have your history of all of your requests. So that's how interlibrary loan works. And inter like I said, interlibrary loan is what you want to do when you are finding, when you are looking for specific books and articles that we do not have here at App State or at UNC Asheville or at Western Carolina because we actually all share each other's collections or articles that we don't have access to. So that's how you would use interlibrary loan in regards to finding research. Now just a disclaimer I will tell you, uh, the thing about interlibrary loan is I can take anywhere from 24 hours to two weeks to get your item. If it's 24 hours, generally it's if it's a PDF article, uh, sometimes two weeks if it's a book or some sort of media. So if it's something that you need yesterday, it's probably not going to help you, but if you get your syllabus in the beginning and you know what's coming and you know what you've got to work on, it's a great resource of, of getting access because Honestly, you guys have access to thousands of libraries in 160 different countries. There, are, so you are getting all kinds of stuff from all around the world. So it's pretty, pretty awesome. If you're a distance education student, staff, or faculty, you can get those items mailed to your physical address. However, if you are an on-campus um, student, staff, or faculty, they will send it right to the library services desk, and you can pick it up directly. So doing a search with App Search. So if you are following along, you've got your your separate window open and you're doing your research at the same time, what you can do is you can go ahead and type in your topic. So if you brought your research topic with you or you simply just want to type in your major to see if it's out there, uh, go right ahead. Okay. Okay, so just doing the simple search using App Search. Okay. This is the page that you're oops, this is the page that you're going to get just by typing in archaeology. So if you look on the left-hand side, you're going to see a big page that says refine results. This is where you're going to be able to limit your results. So if you notice I typed in just the name archaeology and I got 2 million over 2 million hits. That is too much. I that is way too much. Um, I don't have that kind of time. Um, you don't have that kind of time, let's face it. So when you're looking at this page, there's a couple of things that I want you to know. First of all, there is a chat box right here on the right-hand side. This chat box is going to be available on every page. There is There are librarians during the days that the library is open. So let's see, Monday through Friday, we're open 24-7. Uh, Friday, we're open from 9 to 9. Saturday, we're open from 10 to 6. Sunday, we open again at 12.30, and we're open 24 hours. So um, testing for workshop. So as you can see, there is somebody there that can answer your questions. So when the library is not open, it actually gets filtered into another chat box that goes statewide. So you'll have a librarian somewhere within the state of North Carolina that's monitoring the chat box that can actually help you, that have access to our databases and um, can help you get information. So it's kind of a one-stop, I need help right this second. For whatever reason, I can't get into the databases. Um, Oh, great. Laura can hear me. Yay. Okay, good. Good, good. Thank you for letting me know. So that's good. Um, so again, the chat box is really awesome. <laughs> uh, databases at 10. So that's an instant person that you can get help with. So again, if you're having access issues, you can, for whatever reason, we've had some DE students that had some problems getting into the databases, or you're trying to find an article, or you need some help, you can totally use the chat box and get help. So it's a great resource. On the left-hand side, you're going to find refine your results. This is how we're going to break that 2 million search down to something a lot more usable. 
So what I always recommend is if you're looking for articles, I would click full text. What full text is, is that the entire article. So when you are looking for the whole PDF version of the article or the whole HTML version, what this does is this takes your searches and it gets past those just citations where you have to request them on interlibrary loan or try to find them somewhere else. So if you see, just by clicking full text, it brought my search down to a million. So we literally lost a million searches just by clicking full text. If you are looking for peer reviewed journals, if you have very specific instructions from your instructor that you have to have scholarly review, peer reviewed, you can click on peer reviewed journals and that can narrow your search down as well. So you know that professionals in the field have reviewed these articles, they are legitimate, they are resources that you can consider peer reviewed. You can also change the publication date if you're looking for something more specific, maybe the last 10 years or the last 100 years, it depends. You can also browse by types. If you're just looking for articles, you can click academic journals. If you are simply wanting to look for books, you can just click on books. So you can literally narrow down your searches quite a bit just by using the left-hand side of the article or of the screen. Also, too, when you are looking at the title of the items that have come up, you can see kind of underneath it tells you if it's an academic journal. It tells you if it's an ebook. So let's see. Um, maybe I'm not going to look for all of those things. Maybe I just want to see what's out there. We have ebooks and a really amazing ebook ebook workshop as well that you can take as I, I will show you how the ebooks work but there's a lot more to them in, in terms of downloading them and using them on your computer or on your smartphone or your iPad. But you can also tell again this is a video recording. So there's a lot of information just by looking at the first half of the site that will tell you what kind of item it is that you're looking for. So for example maybe you are looking at the ebooks and you're interested in reading this ebook. You click on the title, and what it does is it tells you what language it's in, who the authors are, and how you can connect. Now, this is an online resource, so there's a couple ways that you can view this particular source. So you can click View and Request Item in the Catalog, and then you want to connect to this ebook online. And what that does is that brings the page up. So there's a couple of options when you're viewing ebooks that you can use. You can either read directly online, just by clicking on this link, it will open it up in your browser, and you have access to the whole book. So you can check the cover, the title, all of the different chapters, the indices. Some of the ebook uh, options that we have will let you print a certain amount of pages up. There's, there's all kinds of really cool um, things that you can use with the ebooks. And just so you know, we have over 92 thousand ebooks in our collection. So there's that's quite a bit and we have them in every subject you can think of. Um, you can also do the full download. So again if you check out the ebooks workshop or you request a wrap session with that's a one-on-one -on -one session that you create with a librarian at your own time where they can show you how the various different ebooks work, but you can download it onto your computer, you can download it onto your iPad, just like you would your Kindle. In some cases you can download on your Kindle as well and you can access those books. Something that's really cool about these sites, um, so if I were to go back to the main search where I clicked on the title, you'll see a toolbar at the right hand side. And the toolbar will give you the option to print, to email the citation to yourself. So if you are following along and doing research as you're watching this, you can quickly email that article or link to yourself. But if you actually look right here, you're going to see a button that says Cite. So go ahead and click on that. And just, just for, for, for reference, when you guys are doing your research on the library database, what I highly recommend that you do is that you open up a Word document or a Pages document and start building up your works cited in your bibliography page. Because as you can see, by clicking on that citation link, it will provide the citation for that particular ebook or that particular article for you. So you would just choose if it was APA, if it's MLA, if it's Chicago Turabian, and you can copy and paste that citation into your Words document or your Pages document as you're collecting your research. So it's kind of like uh, multitasking in the coolest degree in the sense that you are building up your works site and your bibliography page at the same time as you're collecting your articles and your books and your ebooks. Sometimes the citation button will look like this. Other times it will look like a bright blue button at the bottom of the page that says cite here. And sometimes you're going to find the citation up here at the top. It varies from which database that you have logged into, but it almost is always there. So keep that in mind when you're doing your research. And just as a small disclaimer, you, the nine, I would say that the 
the, the um, citations that you find on the library databases are, are 95% correct, but every once in a while you get one that's not. So you just want to kind of double check, make sure everything looks the way it looks, um, but nine times out of ten you're going to find that it is the correct citation. So that's, a, again, a really great resource. Um, so we looked at ebooks, we looked at video recordings. So say that you want an actual book, like you want to smell the book, you want to feel the book, you want to hold the pages of the books. Um, I love books. And so there's a couple of ways that you can request the book. Now you'll see right here, just by looking at this particular number five, this is a book. It does state that it's a book and here's its location. So it is located in the main stacks of the library. It's not checked out, so you know it's available. Here is the call number. You can send that call number to you via text message, or you can map it so you know exactly where it is in the library. So again, here it is. Just by clicking on it, it tells you the subject terms. Um, here's, again, that cite button, which is really important. But say that you want to uh, request this item. Maybe you are doing research at home, and you want to collect a bunch of books to pick up at the front desk at the library on Monday because you just don't have time to come in over the weekend. So what you can do with this is that you can click this request button right here. Um, again, just, just for fun, look, check it out. Here's cite this title again. So here's the other citation. You can click on that and get the citation for this book in one of the five. But say that you want to request this book. So you'll click request. And then you will put in your bona fide information. Now, I am not going to enter. Well, actually, maybe I can. I think I can do this. So you're going to put in your, um, actually, I can use this one. So you're going to put in the first half of your App State email and your App State password and click Submit. Oops, OK. Apparently, you can't do both at the same time. OK. So, if you are an on-campus student, you will check, pick up as your pickup location. You will click the ASU Lip Service Desk. So you'll click on that link, and then you'll click Submit. If you are a DE student, staff, or faculty, you're going to click the ASU Distance Learning link. Because what this will do is this will mail that book to your home address. So whatever address you have on site is where the book's going to go. If you are on campus, if you click ASU Lib Service Desk, this means the book, a student will go, collect the book, bring it back down to the, the whole desk, and it'll be right at the main desk, the library services desk on the first floor of the Belt Library. Now, this takes about 24 hours to process. So if you do it this morning and you come in this afternoon, it's probably not going to be ready yet. So it does take about 24-hour turnover for the students to access the books and to bring them down. So keep that in mind. If you come in early and, and the books are still not there, chances are they're still on the shelf. You can go up there upstairs to where they're located and you can get them. However, if you're a DE student, because it is mailed out every day, it does take about two to three days to get to you just because it is mailed through postal service. If you're a distance education student and you're getting books in media mail to your house, you will get a prepaid envelope and or box to put the materials back in when you're finished and send it back. So it does not cost you any money to do this. The same applies for interlibrary loan requests. So just know that you don't have to pay for it. It is a service that we do provide for DE folks. Any questions about requesting holds? It's awesome. I love it. I use it all the time. Um, it's also good, too, for those of you that are on campus, when you go upstairs, so say you're heading up to CC 165, that's actually going to be on the second floor, and you look at archaeology and you find your book on the shelf, look around the shelf. We we catalog everything by Library of Congress here at Belk Library, which means it's very subject specific. So all of the books on archeology span are gonna be in the same section. For those of you in high school, you probably got used to the Dewey method. Um, Dewey's great for smaller libraries, but it's a little difficult to find things because Dewey tends to put things all over the place. Whereas here, using Library of Congress, you're gonna find all kinds of other books about archeology span and that you may not have thought about within that section. So take the time to kind of browse the stacks while you're here. Okay, so any questions about requesting books or having books placed on hold or having books sent to you? Any questions on how to use App Search? 
Now you can limit your search to on app search by clicking books and media. So this is searching the library catalog, but again, you also have access to books at Western Carolina and UNCA. So if you want to broaden your search, you can click this button and you can uh, request items from those universities as well. Now we do have the ABC Express, which will bring the books and materials to us. It generally takes about two or three days for that. If the weather's bad, it takes slightly longer, but when you, you can get those items for free, from those other institutions. So if you do get them, just know that it's going to take a little more time for them to show up at the library front desk, but you'll definitely get them quickly. Okay, so probably what's not necessarily known, and I love showing, is that we have a link right here under Find Information. Bookmark this link, pull this link, keep it somewhere where you know where it is, because this is what this does is that I had mentioned earlier that we use app search because it's very Google friendly. You know, you look at it, you're like, oh, I know this, this is Google, I'm, I, I love it, it reminds me of Google, I'm comfortable with this, I'm gonna do my research. But the thing is, app search, it's a, it's a discovery tool that only searches, it does search all of our books, it does search all of our media, but it actually only searches eight to nine of our main databases, our biggie databases, like our academic search complete. It doesn't actually cover all of the databases that we have. And guys, we have thousands of databases that are accessible to you. So that's why I want you to check out this database and e-research link. So again, databases and e-research, go ahead and click on that. What we've done is we've broken down all of the databases, all of the ones that we offer by name, by type, by subject, um, and even new databases that we have. So for instance, if you, if you know the database specifically that you're looking for, you can click any one of the letters. So for instance, um, you may not know that we have this, but if you click on A and scroll down to Ancestry Library, we actually have access to Ancestry.com, which means you have Ancestry.com as a database that you can use. You can, this is free as within using the Appalachian State University link. So as students, you have access to this. So if you're looking into the history of your family or the history of a famous person, you want to look at genealogy, you just want to see where you are in the records, you totally can click on this link and access it. Um, as long as you are a faculty staff and a member of a student of Appalachian State, you will always have access to this. So that's just one way you can access databases. If you have one specific that you really love, say that you like to use JSTOR, or you like to use Academic Search Complete, or you like to use CINAHL or PubMed, you can access the databases by name. The second option is by type. These are very, very important, especially when you have um, specific instructors that want you to find just primary sources, or you need copyright-free, public domain, free images, music, and video for your projects, or you just don't know where to start. And so, you know, we have a lot of instructors that tell you not to use Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a great resource. Wikipedia is a great resource if you don't know where to start. You know, you want to go to Wikipedia to, to find out about a subject that you're not quite familiar with. However, you never want to cite Wikipedia unless your instructor is super cool and will totally allow it because really anybody can go into Wikipedia and write about any subject. Now, even though it is a lot more heavily monitored than it used to be, most universities and colleges do not consider it a peer-reviewed academic resource. However, with that being said, we all go to Wikipedia every day when there's something that we're just not sure of. But another alternative that you can use here is by clicking the encyclopedia and dictionary link. These are all the different encyclopedias and dictionaries that we have for just about every subject. Well, no, for every subject that we offer here at Appalachian State as a major. So it's kind of an academic Wikipedia page. You can click on Access Science or CQ Reference or Gale Virtual Reference Library. So if you're about to start a paper in a subject that you're not quite sure where to start, this might be a good alternative to Wikipedia. Also, what's kind of cool about using this site is that, um, so let's see, we can go to um, CQ Press Library, CQ Researcher, that's a good one if you're not sure where to start, because as you can see, you can look at all of these topics. So if you're writing a paper on, okay, so it's Boone, right? Most people will want to write a paper on legalizing marijuana, so you can click on legalizing marijuana, and you can get all of the information you ever wanted to know about it. Um, what's cool about using this site is that it breaks it down to, um, specific sections. So 
you can see the full report, you can see the overview, the background, there's a great pros and cons link, so if you are working on a project where you have to do pros and cons about legalizing marijuana, this is a, a great link to press because it gives you both sides of the story. If you click right here under the Cite Now button, you can get the citation for this page that you can copy and paste into your paper. CQ Research Searcher is very much like the academic Wikipedia as it provides you all the information you want to know about that subject, and it's written by experts in the field. So you know there's no guesswork. You know that, that people that are considered experts within these particular um, topics are writing on this page, so it's good. It's a good page to have. It's a, it's a good database to start with if you're not sure where to start. Also, if you are late in a class where you just need primary sources and you're not sure where those primary sources are, you can literally go right to all of the primary source databases that we have. So you're 150% guaranteed that your sources from these sites are going to be primary. Uh, statistics and data is another one. It's a, if you're looking for the most recent statistics for um, environment or science or business, you can click on this link and get all of the databases that provide that. So for those of you that need free images, music, or video, you will click on the images, music, and video site and you will have access to all of the databases that have free, copyright free images and music and information that you can get. So if you're in social work, we have some really great counsel and therapy videos. These are amazing sites. Um, for those of you that want to see videos on how to perform specific um, duties within counseling and therapy. So some are actors, some are real, so it's, it's kind of a cool resource for you. Um, the other one is my particular favorite, it's called Films on Demand. I call this academic Netflix. It's pretty awesome. If you click on Films on Demand, it's streaming video. So it is streaming Nat Geo shows, History Channel shows, um, news articles, news shows, all of this stuff. You can literally go in and type in by your major or type in by your specific, um, maybe you're looking for Nat Geo documentaries or you want to look at ABC News. So you can click on this and literally streaming and watch documentaries and, and streaming video pertaining to your major. And again, these also have citation options as well. So if it's part of your research, you can definitely use the citation option and put it in your paper. Also, the other way that you can access databases is by subject. So if you are following along with me because you've got your page open, click on your major and see what we have in regards to databases for your major. Now, by clicking on anthropology, what's really neat is that I get to find out who the subject librarians are. So if I have any questions or I'm having some issues, I can contact Fred or Betsy. But I can just scroll down and click on the various different databases within my major and know that the information that I am getting out of this um, will be specific to my major. So literally think of it like this, guys. You're using Google, you type in archaeology, you get two million hits. Um, you go into here, you, you type in JSTOR, you type in archaeology, you're going to get considerably less hits, and all of the articles that you're going to get are simply going to be about archaeology. So you're not going to get all that extra filler and extra pages that may reference the word archaeology in it, but you know that the information that you're getting out of here is for your major, and it is going to be, it will give you the peer-reviewed scholarly sources option. You do know that the information that you're going to get out of these databases are legitimate. So a really great example I like to show is to choose a database. Okay, so say I tagged in academic search complete. I can literally click on choose databases right up here and choose more. So if I want to do more than one search, I can totally do that. So let's see, I'm going to type in academic search complete. African American Historical Collections, because I did some of that. Anthropology Plus, that one looks good. Definitely think that will help. Um, and then I will just click OK. OK, so now I'm, I'm literally looking at all of these. What you're going to want to do is you want to click Advanced Search. Now, Advanced Search will give you several options depending on which database you're using, but it will give you options to put more than one keyword search term. So remember when I typed in archaeology and I got Okay, a lot of hits. That's a lot. Now, as an archaeologist, I had to specialize. And I'm sure with you guys within your major, you're going to specialize too. So maybe I'm working on a paper about archaeology and cemeteries, because I did excavate myself quite a few cemeteries back in the day, and I want to be very specific. So, and search. Okay, so this gives me 13 hits. Yay! Um, 
So adding more keywords will narrow your search down and it will also help you to find articles that are very specific to what you're looking for. Um, so let's say United States. Okay, and make sure you spell everything right because if you don't, it makes it harder to find. And I'm a notoriously bad speller. Okay, and then United States. Okay, so that's narrowed down my search to 207, which is way more doable than the 300 plus that we saw earlier. Now, again, I want to narrow my search down some more because I just want the full text. Um, I, I'm on a time limit. I waited to the last minute to write my paper, so I got to make sure I have articles that I can use right now. So I'm going to click on full text. Brought me down to 141. Um, I have to have scholarly peer reviewed because this is a serious paper, so I'm going to click on that. And that brought me down to 104. So as you can see, I, I've got lots of articles about archaeology and cemeteries, not necessarily the United States, but it could just mean that American archaeologists are working within those particular sites. And then I can click on the links and get started with my research. So that's basically how you would do a search using one of the databases within your um, within your major. Now you can do that same search as well when you're using app search. So you can go ahead and search for archaeology. And I can do the advanced search again. So I can click on the advanced search link and I can type in cemeteries. And United States. Okay, so this gives me a more broader search on what the library has in regards to books and media on this topic, in addition to some links for some articles as well. With that being said, that is a basic navigating the databases, how to find the databases, how to successfully use the databases. And of course, the most important thing that you need to, to maybe get out of this webinar is that you always have help. Please, please get help. Um, if you can go ahead and click the Get Help button, you're going to see that there's quite a few options that we have um, for help. You can check out our how-to tutorial videos. I promise you they are mercifully short and very chock full and packed with information. So we have all kinds of videos based on how to use Google Scholar, how to evaluate resources, how to choose a database that, that might be the one for you, how to get books and media mailed to you if you are a distance education student, staff, or faculty. We have videos on how to do annotated bibliographies. So if you are not, you know, you have an annotated bibliography in your class, you're not quite sure how to start, you can check out these videos and we would be more than, um, it would give you all of the information that you need to know. The other option is that you can contact us. You can call us, you can use the chat box, you can text the library, you can email us, you can schedule a wrap session or you can come in person. Now what a wrap session is, is it it's kind of gives you both option to come in person or to just request a phone call, an email, or even a webinar like this where it's just one-on-one. -on -one. Wrap session forms are really easy to fill out. You want to put as much information as you can, your choices for when you want to meet with the librarians, and how you want to do it. If you want to meet us in the AET zone, or if you want to use GoToWebinar like we're using right now, where we can screen share and we can see each other via webcams, telephone, or in person, and you want to put as much about your assignment or about your research needs as you can, and we will contact you directly during one of those choices that you chose and, and we will work with you on whatever research that you have. I highly recommend using this more than once. Uh, what's really cool about this is that you can access librarians the whole time that you're students. So every semester you can meet with a librarian and find out what resources we have pertaining to your major or pertaining to a new class that you're not quite sure about. We also have library guides. So if you were to go back to the main library website and click on Let's see, they move them. Um, browse library guides. We have created guides for just about every subject you could possibly think of. So we have guides for citation, guides for how to use the ebooks, guides for specific classes. You can scroll down and see if your class is here. You can look up subject guides. For instance, um, archaeology, you can check out the subject guide for archaeology. Gives you all kinds of books, ebooks, articles, reserves. It's just another way of getting help on how to navigate the library databases and the library site just specifically through your major. 
So I know I have thrown a lot of information out on you. There's, there's still so much more to learn. So if you just kind of play around with the website or attend any of our other workshops where we talk about specifics like eBooks or better Google searching, you can also find the archive of this recording will be placed on the library website or on this particular website as well.